All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the properties of exponents and practice simplifying expressions involving those exponents and using those rules. This goes along with 8.1a notes. So first, we need to review what those exponent rules are. So we have six rules that we're going to use, and the first one is product of powers rules. So product of powers is when you're multiplying and the bases are the same. So one thing for this rule is that you have the same base. So maybe just a quick reminder, if you have like 3 to the second power, the big number, the, the big part is the base, and then the small part is the exponent. So when I say the bases are the same, we have x to the m and x to the n, so same basis. And you're multiplying, then you add the exponents. So bases are the same, multiplying, add the exponents. Quotient of a power rule down here, quotient implies division. So when you're dividing and the bases are the same, so same bases again, then you can subtract the exponents, so m minus n. So bases are the same, you're dividing, subtract the exponents. And then power to a power, that's when you have an exponent raised to another exponent. In this case, then, the rule is to multiply the exponents. So power to a power, you multiply the exponents. The zero exponent rule. Anything raised to the zero power equals one. I'll show you why that works as we do some examples here, but that's one that you really just want to memorize. Anything raised to the zero power equals one. So even if you have 3,297 raised to the zero power, it equals one. Negative exponents, you need to use the reciprocal. So if you have x to the negative one, you always want to leave, you always want to have positive exponents in the end in your simplified answer. And so, if you have x to the negative m, you make it positive by moving it to the denominator. So doing the reciprocal and making it positive. If it starts in the denominator as a negative exponent, you move it to the numerator and make it positive. So using the reciprocal. The last rule is power of a product or power of a quotient. This is where you have a product like a times b raised to an exponent. Then what you have to remember is that each item in the product needs to get that exponent. So you should have A gets the exponent and B gets the exponent. So it becomes A to the M times B to the M. Quotient rule is similar. If you have A divided by B, all raised to the M, then the A gets the M and the B gets the M. It becomes A to the M divided by B to the M. So let's take a take a look at some of these examples using these rules and refresh your memory on our exponent rules here. Okay. Number one, we have x to the fourth times x squared. This is the product rule. Bases are the same. You're multiplying. So you're going to add the exponents. Four plus two, it's going to be x to the sixth. You might ask, well, why does that work? Well, if you think about it, x to the fourth is x times x times x times x times x squared, and that leaves me with six x's, so x to the sixth. Number two is product, or power to a power. So you have a power raised to another power. The rule says then we multiply those exponents. So two times three, we get x to the sixth again. You might ask yourself again, why does that work? Well, when you square something, x cubed squared, that really means that you take it times itself, so x cubed times x cubed. Adding those exponents, you'd get x to the sixth. You have three x's here and three x's here. Number three, this one goes the product of a power. So you have a product here, three times x raised to the two. So you need to distribute this exponent to both. So that's going to be 3 squared times x squared, which simplifies to 9x squared. 3 squared is 9. Why does that one work? Well, 3x squared really means 3x times 3x. Squaring something times it by itself. So 3 times 3 is 9. x times x is x squared. So doing it two ways, trying to show you how the rule is working as well. 
So here, number four, we have the quotient rule. So you're dividing, the bases are the same. The rule says then you subtract the exponents. So five minus two leaves me with x to the third power. Why does the quotient rule work? Well, if you have x to the fifth in the numerator, that's x times x times x times x times x, divided by x squared, then remember, anytime you divide something by itself, that equals one. So that simplifies to one, this simplifies to one. So we get x times x times x on top is x cubed, and one times one on the bottom is one, so it's equal to x cubed. So it does simplify just to x cubed. Number five, we can use the quotient rule as well. You can think about this one a couple different ways. The quotient rule says you subtract the exponents. So x cubed over x cubed would be x three minus three would be zero. Then using the zero power rule, anything to the zero power equals one. Now if you thought about this, anything divided by itself, when you're looking back at the original, that equals one. That's one way of thinking about the zero power rule and why it works. You have x cubed divided by x cubed. So each x simplifies with an x on the bottom to equal one, and one times one times one is just one. So anything divided by itself equals one, anything to the zero power equals one. Number six, we can use the quotient rule again. If you just start with the top exponent, you get three minus five. Well, that would be x to the negative two power. Now you can't leave this negative exponent, so you do need to use the reciprocal. So it would be one over x squared would be the answer. So move it to the denominator, make it positive. I like to think about this, I have three x's on top and five on bottom. So I know that my answer is going to end in the denominator because there's more x's in the denominator. So I get one over x squared, if you wanna multiply it all out visually and look at it. What I usually do when I do this problem is I use the bigger exponent. So I know that the x's are gonna end on the bottom, so I'm not gonna have anything left on top, so just a one, and I would do the five minus three so that I always end with a positive exponent. That's how I like to think about it anyway. Okay, we have power to a power rule again so when you have an exponent raised to an exponent you multiply those exponents so four times two is eight and since we have no variables here we can just evaluate that expression and three to the eighth power is equal to i need a calculator for that one six thousand five hundred and sixty one so no variables we should simplify it as far as we can now in C, it looks a little confusing because our base to our exponents is negative two. So if you thought about this with variables, this is like if you had x to the negative three times x to the ninth. Well, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents. Negative three plus nine is six, so it would be x to the sixth. So similarly, negative two is our base, so our answer will have negative two, and then we add the exponents because we're multiplying. So negative three plus nine is negative two to the sixth power. We always put parentheses in, or I mean parentheses around negative numbers. Now negative two to the sixth is negative two times itself six times. You end up with a positive 64 as an answer there. There is a different way of solving this C. If you wanted to um, take this negative exponent right here, you got negative two to the negative three power times negative two to the ninth. You could take this negative exponent and move it to the denominator and make it negative two to the positive three power and then simplify negative two, nine minus three, this time using the quotient rule, is negative two to the sixth. Either way, you're gonna end up with this, the same answer. So either using the negative exponent rule and then the quotient or adding the exponents right away. 
Here we have a quotient of, to a power. So you have something being divided, 5 divided by 8 to the third power. That means that you have to have 5 to the third and 8 to the third. So you're distributing that, those exponents. Now these ones are kind of easy to remember because they use the same numbers. 5 to the third is 125 and 8 to the third is 512. So that's kind of neat. So 125 over 512. Okay, just a few more examples of simplifying. Uh, in A here, you have a quotient raised to a power, and we also have power to a power within that as well. So we need to distribute the 3 to each one, and since they already have an exponent, when you take a power to a power, you'll need to multiply those exponents. So A to the 6th, and then B to the negative 9th. Then we do need to end with all positive exponents. So since B is has a negative exponent in the denominator, you need to move it to the numerator and make it positive. It was a divided by b. When it moves to the top, now it's a times b, and then the exponent becomes positive. In b, negative y squared to the fifth, this is really product of powers. You have a product right here, negative y, that's like a negative 1y squared. So you need to take that exponent of 5 to both the negative 1 and the y. So you're going to end up with negative 1 to the 5th, and then y, 2 times 5, that's going to leave you with y to the 10th. Then y squared, then y to the negative 12th. Now bases are the same and you're multiplying. You could move the y to the 12th to the denominator, or we could just add up these exponents, which in this case I think is easier. Because 10 plus 2 is 12, and 12 plus negative 12 is 0. So I'm going to get negative 1 to the 5th. That's just negative 1. y to the 0. Well, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So my final answer is just negative 1. I'm going to skip C for now just for time reasons, and I'm going to go over to D. So D, we have a product and a quotient all raised to a power. So first thing you need to do is take this exponent and make sure to distribute it to each item in here, the numerator and the denominator. If it already has an exponent, you'll need to multiply those exponents. So we're on the numerator, we're going to end up with A to the 6th. This is b to the first, to the third is b to the third. Then a to the negative one to the third is gonna be a to the negative three. And then b to the five cubed is gonna be b to the 15th. Now I'm gonna get rid of this negative exponent right here by moving it to the numerator. So that's gonna become a to the third, then a to the sixth, b to the third over b to the 15th. Then I'm going to simplify the a's first. Those are were being multiplied. Whoops. It's being multiplied here, and bases are the same. So there we can add the exponents, a to the 9th. And then for these two, you need to use the quotient rule. And you're dividing, so you need to subtract the exponents. Notice that there's more b's in the denominator, so the b's are going to end on bottom. Now 15 take away 3 is 12. So three of them will cancel or simplify to 1. There's going to be 12 left. They're going to be left in the denominator. So that's the final answer there. We can't simplify any further because a and b are not the same variable. Okay. Couple more here. This one we have product raised to a power times another product raised to a power. So this two first needs to go to each one inside here. So this is three to the first, so that'll be three squared. And then you're multiplying exponents, so you're gonna get a to the negative 10th. Then you're gonna get b to the negative fourth. And that's gonna be times, take this two to the fifth, a to the 10th and b to the negative 15th. Then simplify when you can. 3 squared, that's the same thing as 9. 2 to the 
fifth power, think about that for a second, that's 32. Then multiply corresponding spots. So this is times here, this parenthesis times this parenthesis. So 9 times 32, that's going to give you um, 288. And then you have a to the negative 10th times a to the 10th. Well, since you're multiplying, bases are the same, you add the exponents. So that's going to be a to the 0. And then you have b to the negative 4th times b to the 15th. Bases are the same, add the exponents, negative 4 plus negative 15 is negative 19. So you're going to have 288, remember anything to the 0 power equals 1, so the a to the 0 is equal to 1, so 288 times 1 is just 288. And then this negative exponent is going to move to the denominator and become positive b to the positive 19, and that would be the final answer there. The second one here, you have three products, but notice that the middle one here is raised to the zero power. So this one right here really equals one. So that one is kind of like it's not there. So then you have negative two m to the negative five times three m. So then again, multiply the constants together, you get negative six. Then when you multiply the m's, remember that a variable always has or an implied coefficient if it's not listed is equal to 1 so this is really m to the first times m to the negative fifth add those exponents you're going to get m to the negative fourth you can rewrite that with a positive exponent by moving the m to the denominator and making it positive okay skip a couple I am going to just do this one really quick because I want to show you what happens when you have a pro or a quotient raised to a negative exponent? The easiest thing to do here is to, before you start, get this negative exponent and turn it positive. And the way you do that is to flip the fraction on the inside. So take the reciprocal of everything. So flip it over, move the numerator to the denominator and vice versa, and now it'll be raised to the positive 2 power. Then take everything to that exponent including the denominator. So you're going to have x squared, y, remember that you multiply when you have power to a power, so y to the 14th. This is 2 to the 1st, so that would be 2 squared, x to the 4th, and then y to the 8th. And then you can simplify from there. So we got 2 squared down here, that's going to just equal 4. If we look at the x's, x squared over x to the 4th, quotient rule says to subtract the exponents, except for that there's more exponents in the denominator, so I have the 4 down here, and then x to the 4th, it's going to end at the denominator since there's more x's at the bottom, 4 minus 2 is 2. Then looking at the y's, you're dividing, so subtract the exponents again, this time they're going to end on the top because there's more on the top, so 14 minus 8 is 6? Yes, yeah, 6. So y to the 6 over 4x squared is our final answer. Okay, scientific notation. We need to review this real quick because you can use your exponent rules with scientific notation. Remember, we use scientific notation to write really big numbers or really small numbers. <clears throat> The rules for scientific notation is that it's you write it as some constant times 10 to some power. Now this C number has to be between 1 and 10, which means it, it can't be 10. It has to be 9 or less. It has to be a digit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So when you're writing scientific notation, you find here I have 4 and 5, so I'm going to put my decimal right between 4 and 5. Then N is the integer. Um, that tells you how many places to move the decimal in which direction. When n is positive, you move your decimal to the right. If n is negative, you move the decimal to the left. So here I'm going to have 4.5. I have to include any significant digit after the first one. So 4 is my first one. 5 is significant digit, so I have to include it. Times 10. Now, if I put the decimal right here at 4.5, I have to go 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 to the left to get back to my original answer. And so it's 4.5 times 10 to the negative 12th is my answer. So because I have to move it back to the left to get to the answer, that's where I'm at. Let's do one more. This one, I'm going to put my decimal. The C has to be just a digit from 1 to 9, so 1, and then everything else follows. And I have to include anything significant, so anything that's not a 0, so 1.39 times 10. This time, to get back to my original answer, I have to move it to the right, so it'll be a positive exponent, and I have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. So it'll be 1.39 times 10 to the 9th. It's that number, that really big number written in scientific notation. See, that's million, billion, one trillion, three hundred ninety billion. Going backwards then, doing it the other way, I'm just going to do a couple of these. Um, like number four here, or this one anyway. I have 4.00027 times 10 to the seventh. So notice how there's some extra zeros in here, and then two seven. So two seven were significant digits. So I had to, you have to include those in the scientific notation. But this is 10 to the seventh, which means I need to move the decimal seven, four, five, six, seven to the right because it's positive. And now look at these blanks I got. I have to add in zeros there. So this written out in standard form would be four, zero, 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 two, seven, zero, zero. So it would actually be 40 million, 2,700. If you have a negative exponent, that tells you to take the decimal and move it to the left that many places. So one, two, three, Similar, fill in those blanks with zeros. So this would be 0 0.0096 in scientific notation. The reason we reviewed those is because you can use your exponent operations with computing with scientific notation. So we have two large numbers here, they're written in scientific notation, being multiplied together. So we want to find the product and write our answer in scientific notation as well. So what you do is you multiply these two first. So 2.4 times 6, take 24 times 6 and get 144, move the decimal in one place, so it's 14.4 with 16 times 24. Now, when you take 10 to the third times 10 to the fifth, well, your bases are the same and you're multiplying. So the rule is, is that you add the exponents 10 to the eighth. Now, the decimal is not in standard form, or this is in scientific form, because 14 is bigger than 9. So we will have to move the decimal over 1 to the right, which means that you have to, since you have, I mean, 1 to the left. Since you're going to the left here, you have to add 1 to your exponent here. So your final answer will be 1.44 times 10 to the ninth. 1.44 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, here we have power to a power. So 3 to the third power, 3 cubed, is 27. So you have 27 times. Then remember when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponent. So it would be 10 to the negative 12th. In a whole number, the decimal is always at the end. So for scientific notation, you do need the leading number to be less than 9. So you will have to move this again over to the left. Since you're moving it to the left, that means we're going to have to add 1 to our exponent here because when we go back to the original answer, we're going to have to go one more to the right, if that makes sense. So our final answer will be 2.7 times 10 to the negative 11th power. And then using the quotient rule. So really, this is 5.4 divided by 7.2. Well, 5.4 divided by 7.2, I used my calculator for this one, is 0 0.75. Times 10 to the, I'm dividing here, dividing, so you subtract the exponents. 
So you're gonna have negative two minus negative eight, which really is negative two plus eight. So you're gonna have 10 to the sixth power there. So we end up with 0 0.75 times 10 to the sixth for the quotient rule here. Again, we have to move our decimal one to the right because I need it to be a number in front that's between one and nine, so 7.5. Since I move this to the right this time, that means I'm gonna have to go left one more time when I am calculating the final answer, so you have to subtract one from that exponent. So move to the right, you subtract one from the exponent on the 10, so it'll be 7.5 times 10 to the fifth, one less place value to go. Okay, I think I've covered it. We've reviewed the exponents. Remember, these are the rules that you really need to know. You need to know that when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. When you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. When you're multiplying to power to a power, you multiply the exponents. Take the reciprocal. When you have a negative exponent, make it positive. Always end with positive exponents. That's very important. You always have to have positive exponents. Anything to the zero power equals one. If you have a power raised to, or product raised to a power, make sure that each item gets the exponent. Same with division, make sure each thing gets the exponent. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.